So the mutational landscape in CLL is a complicated uh, topic. It's a topic that we're working diligently now on collecting data and making correlations. When patients come to MD Anderson as a new patient, they all have a, a 29 gene panel sequenced. So we're sequencing 29 different genes uh, at the initial workup or if patients are going on treatment and we're gaining an understanding of what the landscape of those mutations is, how frequent some of these are or aren't, and how those correlate with response to the newer treatments and to outcomes. So we're working on publishing a paper right now just looking at the incidence of these genes that have been reported to have been mutated. and. Moving forward, when we report our newer trial results, like our ibrutinib plus venetoclax trial, we'll be reporting correlations with outcomes with regard to those genes and gene mutations. Um, so it's, it's a complicated topic. It's a topic that requires us to sequence everybody. So we need to get data and generate data f in sequencing all the patients. And then looking at what correlates with outcomes will be the, the next step, which is what we're working on now. The panel that we have developed, the 29 gene panel, was generated based on the early exome sequencing data, looking at what f mutations we see in CLL. Things like TP53, Notch1, ATM, SF3B1. So there's several that have been reported. Now the frequency of those mutations occurring across the general CLL population is relatively low. However, um, we have sequenced now upwards of 1,000 patients, um, and so we have a better idea of what the frequency of those mutations is and what, are, what mutations are more common in the untreated versus the previously treated uh, population. And we're now working on our next version of a gene panel for sequencing, uh, which will be a much larger panel than we uh, initially had. Um, but in general, this, the, the 29 gene panel ha that we have was developed based on the early reports of what was mutated in CLL.